Okay, hello everybody. Uh, this will be the um, first video where you actually have to hear me talk. Uh, hopefully that doesn't come across too bad. Uh, so today we have uh, a one view, I believe, ESL technology lamp. Uh, they're interesting lamps that uh, I don't, I haven't seen many videos of on YouTube. I believe there's uh, only one other channel, uh, Spat Spare, I believe, that has them. And, uh, they struck me as extremely interesting simply due to the fact that what they're calling ESL technology is really just a cathode ray tube. And, in fact, if you uh, look at uh, Spat Spare tearing down a, one of these lamps, it is a black and white cathode ray tube. Which is really interesting, considering that uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily put uh, televisions and light bulbs in the same category, but according to this company, they are. And uh, as you can see, it's got uh, quite a few big claims. Uh, apparently, sadly, it doesn't really live up to those. But, if nothing else, it is mercury-free. I've tested them, they don't quite live up to the 65-watt claim. But uh, these bulbs are really interesting, because uh, had they come out in the like 2012 era when they were supposed to, they would have probably done very well considering that they are better than CFLs in terms of color rendition index, which is something I care a lot about. And they also, uh, well, they're relatively cheap. I mean, these things are about $14 a bulb. They probably could have been cheaper if they made more. And also, LEDs weren't really a threat at the time. They were still terrible CRI, uh, very uh, experimental back in 2012. But now, when these things finally came out, I believe 2015, they did well enough, but the LED is now here, and there's no way these things are ever going to compete, because they're not as efficient, and they're not as bright, and nowadays you can get an LED with 95 CRI for a little over twice the price, but it's a lot brighter and it'll last longer anyway. So there's no longer really much of a point to these, but they are interesting. So I believe, uh, well, they've both been opened, but uh, let's just go with this box. Kind of a somewhat interesting package on design. If you ask me, it doesn't really leave much protection for the bulb, but what do I know about packaging engineering? So this is the bulb. As we can see, it's, uh, I mean, it looks like a cathode ray tube if, uh, if you've seen one th inside of a television. It, it's got significant weight to it. I'd argue it's eh, getting close to around a pound. So, uh, if we just go ahead and, uh, plug it in, this is the interesting part where uh, it kind of starts up like a very old uh, vacuum tube style television. Uh, you'll find that uh, maybe I'll have to slow down the footage for it, but it kind of uh, starts in the middle with a spot and then very quickly flares out. And uh, that was something I wasn't expecting to see, so here goes. So once it gets going, as you can see, there is a bit of a delay before it completely starts out. It is a very nice white light. The issue is, is uh, I think we I think we all know that this is not a 65 watts equivalent. Like I said, a uh, 50 would probably be a bit more honest of an answer. But it is a it's a very nice light. It's a uh, very soft. Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, I don't really have any fruit around to go do some color rendition tests on, but uh, we just grabbed this power supply, as you can see, uh, I mean the color of the wires looks just fine. Uh, they're, they're, they're nice bulbs. Uh, the issue is also is, well there's static on it because it's, it's a CFL, which, you know, I guess uh, that's to be expected, but these things get very hot over time. And uh, give it a few hours and uh, this will be like, you can't touch it. And if you ask me, that's a bit of a problem, because it sounds like the main mode of failure of these things is the switching transistors up in the top for the drivers of the horizontal beam are failing, and uh, as a result, the, the, whole, the whole lamp is worthless, because it's either only li lighting a line, or it's like a little spot, and uh, that's, that's no good. So it almost sounds like you'd have to put these in a, uh, in a place where you could have a forced air cooling on them, but... If you ask me, that kind of takes away the point of uh, having a light. Like, if you're not going to have a fan 
for your light in your kitchen or something where you might put such a spotlight of a sort. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure. Uh, perhaps they should have made this like aluminum with heat sinks. I don't know. Heat sink fins, it's, it's hard to say. But sure is an interesting bulb. Uh, when it turns off, it just kind of fades out. There's some capacitors in these things. You have to be careful. Uh, you can get nailed by them if you're uh, not careful. Sometimes even just touching the base afterwards can give you a nasty jolt. So uh, I'm not going to go touch that for a bit. I'd rather not uh, get shocked. But uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, those of you who are saying this is clearly a uh, copy of a uh, parrot, well, uh, look at it as more of a tribute. And uh, if you like that, go subscribe to his channel because he's definitely the inspiration for me to do this in the first place. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I guess see you next video. And also, I still have the video for the 18 watt socks lamp coming out. The problem is, is that uh, I'm I'm having trouble trying to find music to put to it, uh, and I'm rad rather not get hit with all the copyright strikes in the world. So, hopefully, I'll have it up soon. That and uh, I managed to uh, via an outlet splitter run uh, a 90 watt, 55 watt, and 18 watt socks lamp up at the same time for uh, even more socks light. Which hopefully that'll come out interesting too. But until next time, I guess.